Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. We go to 11 caught up with uh, Janet Gardner, former singer of Vixen, and her husband Justin James, who have teamed up for four records over the years. Uh, their fourth being No Strings, which will be released via Pavement Music uh, this coming Friday, June 9th. Uh, check it out. Enjoy the interview. Feel free to comment, share it, and don't forget to subscribe. All right. Thanks. That's actually, people ask about that. That's a Lamb of God cell phone pick that I took like. I think a couple summers ago at a show in Portland, nice. Oregon. So there you go. I just seem to great. like it. And, and I think a lot of people tend to like the fire, you know, that, that <laughs> totally. pretty yeah. rock and roll. So, uh, so this is like, uh, I think I've spoken to you guys a couple of times. This is like yeah. my yeah. third time speaking with you guys about this a new record. Fourth time you guys have paired up. Uh, I think this is the third official uh, Janet Justin, as far as the title of the, of the artist. But uh, so you got uh, this new record, um, No Strings. Uh, tell me a, bit, a little bit about that. How long has it been in the works? It actually started, believe it or not, before the last album, Synergy, came out. Mm -hmm. Ideas were starting to flow around while we were waiting for that to be released. Um, so it's, it's been a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And we just went all in on this album. I mean, not that we don't on all of them, but this one was just a lot of nights just trying to perfect it the best mm -hmm. we possibly could without over perfecting it. Right. Well, yeah, Justin really took a huge deep dive, did a lot of research on okay. making the sonic aspects of it better and cleaner and, and giving it a little more air. Mm -hmm. And I think that really went a long way. It was worth it. Right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so much time. I, I imagine, I think from what I recall in, in speaking with the two of you uh, last previous couple of times that you guys do the recording at home, I believe, right? After hours kind of thing. I think if I recall like after the kids have gone to bed, you guys get uh, <laughs> get working, you know, yeah, like. They, uh, they don't go to bed anymore, though. That's the problem. Oh, that's true. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot There's of time that, has passed yeah. since we last spoke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're probably they're probably want to stay up late now. They yeah. do. <laughs> yeah. So we can't so, get rid of them so easy. Right. So with the you know, with you guys doing the primary uh bulk of the work at home, I mean when when is when do you guys know when to say when, you know, because you could be like trying to refine these songs over and over and over, and you're like, we can't get it any better. And sometimes I you know, like with others like with things that I try to do, you get to the point where maybe you're like, wow, I liked it better the first, you know, the first way I did it versus the third or fourth. We definitely had incidents of, of that on this mm -hmm. album. And it got to the point where you had to set a deadline, I think, for yourself. Mm -hmm. Or I know for me, when it came to like mixing some of these songs, that eventually your ears start to play tricks on you and you you're not hearing it correctly anymore. So I remember on a few cases, I would say, okay, this Saturday, it is done no matter what comes, mm -hmm. wherever it is, that is it. You, it's time to walk away from it. And it's both a, a curse and a blessing to be able to do right. this on your own at home because- Right, there's no studio time clock ticking. Right. right. So, but you can be your own worst enemy at the same time. So Yeah, and exactly what you said happened a couple of times. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd listen- and then listen in our cars and then listen in the headphones and the earbuds and all the different ways. And there were times when we were like, God, this was better last week. <laughs> yeah. What what do we right. do now? You know, right. how do we gotta re backtrack and figure out, you know, find that magic. Mm -hmm. and sometimes, yeah, you go too far and then you have to backtrack. He started over a couple of times, literally oh, wow. all the effects, okay. everything off bare naked start over so yeah it's it's hard to do very hard to let it go now was there anything that didn't make the record because you guys were kind of like you know i don't know we can we can even use this i mean i'm sure that probably has happened in the past i don't know if it's happened for this particular record well nothing that got finished there's right. a pile an endless pile of ideas that you still 
playing something in the car. And I'll go, what is that? And I'll go, is that thing we were working on? But, <laughs> they'll they'll oh, be yeah, on the I next totally album. About that. Uh, well, there you go. Once you refine it, right? <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. But normally if it's a song that we believe in and that we really like and something's just not right, mm-hmm. we'll keep at it until it's fixed, until it's uh, right. If okay. it's something we like and believe in, if not, it just goes into the pile. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Do you guys even do demos these days or do you just kind of collect song ideas or riffs or whatever, maybe melody lines or a particular lyric and then just kind of take it from there? Yeah, I don't. I mean, one of the nice things about doing that at home and in our own studio is right. you kind of skip that demo part. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, if it's something like hypothetically, if it's a riff I come up with and I show Janet, I can usually tell pretty quickly if it's something she's into and if she's not. And if she's into it, then yeah, we go full force and we don't let up until that song is pretty much done. And if if it's not an idea that's jiving with one of us, then okay, we move on, we move forward mm-hmm. to something else. So yeah, we don't do demos. It you know, if right. if it I don't I don't remember this ever really starting totally over. No, I don't think so. Because nowadays, too, you can cut and paste and Mm -hmm. it's so easy. You're not cutting tape. You're just moving stuff around. Right. You know, so you don't really have to go, okay, we need one solid performance beginning to end to make this song work. You don't have to do it like that anymore. So, yeah. And and I know because Justin's like the studio whiz. I don't know how much of uh, experience you have as far as, you know, recording and, and stuff like that, Janet, but it, has there ever come a time where you, you're, you get to the point also where you're like, Oh, uh, I don't want to go there because you can't replicate it live. Or is that even something you guys consider? No, as far as like with songs and stuff. No, we don't really concern ourselves with replicating it live. We cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you're, right. it's, different, it's, it's, it's a different thing. And of course, you know, we, we want to be able to pull everything off live that's mm-hmm. that we record. Um, but it's not really a concern while we're doing it. We want it. We want to make the best record and right. we want to do what's best for the song. So I don't know. Right. Do, do you ever yeah, I mean, think much about that? No, I mean, the hardest thing, I think, for what we do in replicating it live would be like it's i call it the deaf leopard syndrome where you mm, have right eight guitar parts on one song which are impossible right. to pull off so you've got to either make a hybrid version of all those parts or figure out what are the two most important parts you want to play live mm-hmm. um, other than that no i don't think we really concern ourselves too much with how is it going to trans translate live versus the studio no i mean in, you know we stack up vocals like crazy mm-hmm. like everybody else and yeah we don't have 10 people on stage singing so right. you know right, we have right. sort of live we have to just sort of m- pick the most important elements mm-hmm. and you know then the energy sort of gets it over that that right. hump and a lot of people like it better a lot of people the you know the simple more stripped down live version yeah absolutely i mean ironically too this last year we ventured into doing acoustic shows just the two of us Mm -hmm. so those are really stripped down oh boy were we intimidated to go out and do that i mean you see some people out there like john karabi who is such a poet to and those by himself or mike tramp and we were like oh god i don't know if we can do that this stripped down Mm -hmm. but it's funny you know we go out there and we have a blast and people like it and we watch videos and it's like there's certain parts that are cooler i think it is yeah, it's more intimate yeah i think you know there's definitely it's a different kind of satisfaction we don't come off stage like sweaty and oh my god you know you come off and it's like i i think people enjoyed that yeah right right we're moved by you know the sort of more simple intimate performance right which you know i should just jump right to that because uh you mentioned the acoustic performance um i caught you guys on the cruise when you were at the uh at the lounge you know performing acoustically so it was so it was so funny because uh i was downstairs uh catching the beginning of winger 
And my wife texts me and she goes, you got to come see this. I don't know who this is because she was, you know, how the lounge is. If you were too far back, you can't really make out who yeah. who's performing. Um, and I was like, oh, you're going to pry me away from winger. I, this better be good. <laughs> you know, so I, you know, ran up the a few decks and I was like, oh, I know who this is. I go, Janet Gardner. And, and she goes, oh, do I know who that is? And I go, of course you do. You know, you know, the singer from Vixen, former singer. She goes, oh, but what a great performance. You're right. I mean, I think as far as that uh, goes, it was a, a departure from the electric stuff you know, even a departure from the, the, you know, thumping bass th that I was listening to downstairs with Kip Winger. And it was like, wow. And, and not only that, but I hadn't caught you guys. And obviously you were on my list to see. So I'm pretty thankful to the wife that she texted me. So I was able to go upstairs and catch you guys, but what a, what a killer performance. And it went over very well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We, we had fun. It's just so much more casual. Mm-hmm. That way, you know, it's kind of refreshing for us too. Yeah. We just kind of say what's on our mind at the moment. We give each other a hard time and then. <laughs> and I was going to ask, uh, initially, was it going to be uh, you you two as a duo just doing acoustic? Is that what you guys were asked to do or did it evolve to that for the, what, for the Monsters of Rock cruise? Oh, the cruise, yeah, that's yeah. what we were hired to do. Okay. Yeah, we knew we, you know, we prepared totally to, for it just to be the two of us, two guitars and a couple microphones. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was a blast. I mean, at first, you know, we were like, God, we wish it was the full band. And, you right. know, our drummer Richie and our bass player Anthony are great guys. And we always have so much fun with them. But in the end, it, it turned, it worked out. It was, it was great. Mm -hmm. And we got to do songs that we don't get to do normally with the full band. And we get to, different renditions of the songs that we don't right. play the same way with the full band and, and that i that i really enjoyed doing that yeah coming up with different versions mm -hmm. you know because you do it the same every night with the full band and it's great and there's a lot of energy and stuff but it was kind of nice to just go what can we do with this to make it different than what people are used to hearing mm -hmm. so it was a challenge and it was kind of rewarding Right. Thank so you. out of curiosity, I mean, did this spark any potential interest in doing an all acoustic record, you know, these series of performances? Because kind of like what you said, I mean, Mike Tramp, you know, seems to do it fairly well and has kind of tightened yeah. up that whole thing. Karabi is like a total pro, even inserts a little bit of storytelling like you guys did a little bit, you know, yeah. and even some comedy. It's almost like a stand up yeah. slash right. storyteller show with acoustic music. Right. But yeah. uh, uh, so for yourselves, did it did it uh, kind of spark a little bit of interest in doing something acoustic in the future? I know we have this record, which we'll talk more about. But uh, yeah. since we're talking acoustic music. Why not? Absolutely. I mean, for me personally, I would like to do maybe a song or an EP, maybe not a full album. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm there yet, but maybe an right. EP or at least a song and put it out there acoustically just to show people what we can do with these and a different take on them. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> She's on the fence. I think she wants to rock. Exactly. Yeah. I'm always I mean, more of the whip whip person when it right. comes to recording so well i <laughs> doing a full acoustic album i think that's limiting I, uh -huh. I, well that's why i think maybe just like an ep or a song or two not a, a full so album song or two but we do on every album we do a couple acoustic -y kind of oriented right songs but yeah i don't know you might have to <laughs> to get me to hey, do that you know that's not such a bad thing i mean she wants to really crank up the volume you know you're supposed right. to you know turn it down as we get older but she's like let's exactly. dial things up a little bit more so yeah. that's awesome about that acoustic album thing <laughs> so so what was it about the song no strings that also inspired you guys enough to even title the record that well i I remember when I first heard Justin playing just that opening thing mm -hmm. down in the basement. Yeah. I fell in love with it immediately. Mm. I ran downstairs. I was like, what is that? We have to work this up. <laughs> and I don't know. I, I just think it's 
you know, one of my favorite songs on the album. Mm -hmm. And we went through a few different title ideas and that was the one that just stuck. Ah, okay. What was the working title for that, for that, Justin, back in the beginnings of the early beginnings of that tune? I think it's always been no strings. I don't. Okay. (laughs) All right. You did. I did. It was like blues thing or something. Oh, oh okay. Else. Right. Yeah. I always oh, there you go. Names <laughs> in our recording software, you know, when I come up with an idea and usually, right. yeah, when she starts coming up with lyrics, that's, you know, it'll I know, and we don't, it, it's funny too, because when we go through them, we're like, what is that? Yeah. What so is we'll that? Have to like, you know, put it up and oh, we're not very, or- call it that. We're not very organized when we first start. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what makes this such a, good working relationship both on and off you know stage you know studio obviously you have to live with each other you do recording at home geez you know all things all sorts of things could go wrong if if there isn't that level of communication and stuff right I I think that's that's it the communication I think we've always been very open with each other and Mm -hmm. you know we're we get along great we are very much alike and like the same things and well, and mutual respect. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. that's a huge, huge one is that, you know, we both have a lot of respect for each other and, and we do compromise a lot and we pick our battles very carefully. Mm. So it keeps the positive vibes flowing while we're working. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want one of us with hurt feelings and storming off mad and things right. like that. So, I mean, I think we're both very sensitive to that and... And it it works. And what's ironic too, like when we first, before we started even doing this, we avoided Mm -hmm. it. We knew we both can play. We knew we were both musicians, but we didn't want it to interfere with our marriage, our relationship. Mm -hmm. And once it happened, and I've said this before that, you know, it got to be so much fun that, you know, where most couples are going out to plan, you Mm -hmm. know, Saturday night at the movies or date night. For us to be in the studio writing together and working, that was more fun. That was just right. it was exhilarating. And it was cool because we were making with each song a baby and something to see where could we take this to, where could it go? And it really became a fun passion, hobby, and yeah, it brought us, us to do. It brought us closer together. We yeah. were afraid it might, you know, drive a wedge. Sure. You know, some people are not meant to be married and work together. Mm-hmm. And so there was that fear there, but it didn't take long to get over that. Yeah. They're like, oh, this is fun. Nice. <laughs> well, fun. you know, and I think from a outsider, you know, just kind of seeing the big picture, I think it, it, what I see in these interviews and have heard in these interviews that I've done with you guys over the past couple other albums, you know, is what I saw on stage, you know, there on the, at the lounge. So it, it kind of all it all jives it all mixes and meshes together with what we're seeing so i I think it's awesome oh thank you so you have this video for 85 tell me about that and kind of the the backstory on that tune well that obviously came from me because justin was very young in 85 (laughs) (laughs) yeah um i can't remember exactly I mean, I did want to do something about that time period because I still look back on that with such fond, you know, Mm -hmm. memories being so young and just not a care in the world, no responsibilities. We're just, you know, we're just going to make it work. We're going to play our songs. You know, we were so determined to um, get where we wanted to go and Mm -hmm. have a lot of fun in the process. And so I just started thinking back to, you know, the, all we needed was a couple guitars and a duct tape couch. And that's exactly how we felt. We didn't care about cars and buying a house or any of that. Our needs were so small and all we wanted to do was make music and write songs. So that's kind of where it came from. Justin had the musical idea. Yeah. Um, and then we wrote the chorus together. Yeah. You know, you started with the. And that's just kind of how it, I, you know, I said, how do you feel about this 
actually we had a different chorus, didn't we? We did. I don't remember what it was because that different <laughs> chorus lasted one night. Yeah, we, we had a different chorus, it. and I woke up the next day and go, no, 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 I got it, I got it now, I got it. Okay, so that was one of those songs. And... I think we were up to like three or four in the morning working oh, it. Wow. So it was, yeah, you sleep on it, you wake up and go, oh, wait a minute, I got a different melody in my right, head. Right, I that know chorus. what this needs now. Yeah. And then, then we came up with the chorus first, and then, yeah, wrote wrote the verse lyrics, and we just we talk a lot when we're working on lyrics of just I'll get stuck and he'll, you know, get me unstuck and vice versa. He'll go, Oh, what about this? And it just sort of telling each other a story kind of, right. That's kind of how all of that happened. Nice. You know, one of the great things about you guys is you continue putting out physical stuff and you do these bundles with all these cool things like this time around. I think it's a eight by 10, uh, you know, autographed card and then the T-shirt and the album and previous time it's posters, this and that and the other. I mean, it's it's uh, what uh, inspires you guys to continue uh, releasing physical product when, you know, a lot of other artists are kind of like, yeah, we'll just throw it up on amazon music or apple music and call it good for me it's the sound quality first and foremost um mm -hmm. we just got the physical copies of our new cd i saw that awesome. yeah yeah and i went out to the car and i put it in to listen to it and the sound quality on a cd versus an mp3 or oh yeah Spotify streaming it's night and day it's like a blanket mm -hmm. being pulled off and you know, and I just think it's just so cool to still have that physical item in your hand with a booklet or something that you can read a little bit and stuff instead mm -hmm. of the, I mean, streaming's great and you have access to a lot of stuff, but to me, it's almost, it's like too much. You just, you're constantly, you don't focus on things long enough and gone are the days of listening to an album from start to finish. I mean, it's rare that you, you know, you could just jump to this album or you put it in a playlist mixed with hundreds of different artists. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. And I think, you know, even when I pop that thing in my car and listen to it, I, it was, it was brand new again to me, even to mm -hmm. hear that a different sound and more punch, more clarity. It was, I love it. I do too. And I still like playing CDs and I was so disappointed. I bought a new car and it has no CD. Oh, no. <laughs> what am I going to oh, do? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's true. That's a that's a huge issue these days with some of the newer uh, vehicles is that they don't have a CD player. You either have to yeah. find a way to have one installed or, or go through alternative measures. I've even seen portable uh, uh, USB, you know, CD right. players that they're like a Bluetooth that kind of, uh, yeah, you right. know, connect to your existing system. I, I was like, wow, like that. I don't know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> so so what's the game plan going forward because i know you guys have some shows lined up throughout uh, you know the summer i think big one with queens which is great and then some stuff with quiet riot and then some acoustic shows and stuff like that uh what's the game plan going forward after those shows and where if you want to talk a little bit about those gigs that you got coming up well we're really the one you meant the queens gig coming up um that's mm -hmm. gonna be our first show to promote the new album um right. so we are super excited. It's at a venue that's not far from where we live. Oh, nice. Incredible theater. Um, and those guys are just fantastic, too. So we mm -hmm. are super excited about that. The uh, show with Quiet Riot, it's with Sebastian Bach and Quiet Riot. Oh, that's right. Bach. Um, wow. Yeah. So that'll what a bill. Be, yeah, that's going to be a <laughs> lot of fun. Yeah. And um, and then we're doing the New England Rock Fest. Mm. Uh, out in Connecticut, which we lived in Connecticut for a long time, and we haven't been back there since we moved, so we're excited okay. to go out there. And I think that's with Firehouse and Heaven's Dead. Yeah, Ed. that's right. So that'll be fun. The Whiskey A Go Go we're coming back to, which is always fun. Right. And, and we haven't announced it totally yet, but it's almost the deal is almost sealed. We're going to Australia for a couple weeks again. Oh wow, nice. Year. Yeah, so, that's right. That's right. You guys did that last go round, right? Yeah. So we're 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 it's going to be busy, but we're super excited for it. Nice. Wow. So busy and, you know, more shows and, you know, one near the, near uh, your uh, home there. You, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. You can even yeah. leave the kids and sneak out and go do the gig. Come back. 
<laughs> backstage area will be a madhouse. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be crazy, but it'll be fun. No, it'll be great. It, it's a really, really, it's called the Arcada Theater. And it's just, it's, it's actually, right, it's where we met. So oh, it's wow. always back to where we first met and play. So nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, you guys. Yeah, it's been a blast. Always talking to Justin and Janet, Janet and Justin. I guess it's <laughs> Janet and Justin. I don't want to, I want to get it right. You know, uh, but it's always, a, it's always a blast talking to you guys. You look like you're know. having so much fun, which I think it's genuine. You know, I, I feel it. I saw it, you know, and I'm seeing it now, uh, but we'll plug the record. You know, we'll get links, we'll get links right. to the socials, we'll get links to the shows, and we'll throw this up on the you We Go to 11 YouTube channel. Thanks so much for your time. It was a blast. Hope to talk to you again, and hope to see you guys out in the Northwest at some point. I know you guys can't really do anything about that. It's the promoters that book the people and bring them to your area, but uh, hopefully right. somebody... I'm, I'm about... Oh, about 60 miles from east of Portland, Oregon. So I'm in the Columbia River Gorge. So oh, more of the right. rural area. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, so. it's hard because everything is so spread out there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to, it's easier to go to the East coast where you can bop around, oh, for sure. you know, it's yeah. hard. The Northwest is difficult, but yeah, we'll, we'll get our agent on that. Yeah, we what have, you know, there? there's got to be some upcoming uh, multi band festival that maybe, you know, it, maybe it'll happen. Otherwise, oh I'll have to I'll have to, uh, you know, make some of these select uh, shows, you know, like caught you guys on the cruise. So that was a pleasant surprise and 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 a blast. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the show. And yeah, like yeah. always, it's always great. To yeah. And tell you. your wife, good job getting you out there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> she's going to see this. I'm sure she's going to take credit for it as always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks so much. It was a blast again. And thank you for your time. And we'll get this online and get it to the folks at the PR. Sounds great. great. Thank thanks you. So All right. Much. Take care, huh? Nice to see you again. See ya. Bye. 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 Bye.